The Pittsburgh Penguins are hanging on to a small chance of making the playoffs and tonight's game against the Washington Capitals will be a big deciding factor. And if they can continue uh, to climb the rankings and potentially crack a playoff spot, we'll discuss that game as well as the Boston Bruins, Carolina Hurricane, Hurricanes game and the third game, the St. Louis Blues and Nashville Predators. Guys, welcome into puck time here on Wager Talk TV. I'm Andrew. I've got Carmine and Brian with me to break these down. Best bets, of course, at the end of the show. All right, Carmine, we'll start things off with you. Should be a great one in this one here. Boston Bruins, Carolina Hurricanes, Carolina, the home team. What are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, I'm glad we're not, uh, the three of us are not dropping the gloves two seconds into the show like that game last night in New, in New York. Andrew, uh, this is a great game, man. I'm telling you, um, whether it turns out to be a great game on the ice will remain to be seen. But you've got a, a couple teams here, and you, and you look at them as far as the standings go. You've, uh, with the Rangers' win last night, they're at 106 points. you got the Bruins at 103 and the Canes at 101. Now, the Bruins got the number one seed in the Atlantic right now, but that can change quickly because, uh, number one, if the Bruins lose tonight to Carolina in regulation time and Florida goes into Ottawa and beats them, they're a couple points apart for that number one seed. But then they play in a couple days against each other, Florida and Boston, and another Florida win puts them in the number one seed which is hard to believe considering the struggles that uh, they're having. You know, I looked at this one and you, whenever we talk about goalies and whenever I talk about goalies on this show, because they're unconfirmed unless uh, we can find that they're confirmed. I'll talk about uh, goalies like it's, it's supposed to be Swayman and Anderson in goal tonight. It could turn out that the Bruins decide to go with Allmark. Um, I'll let you know if my play is based on the goalies or regardless of the goalies. So it won't matter who um, eventually ends up in net. But I look at this one, Andrew, and I'm leaning straight under in this one. Uh, everything on the show has, uh, uh, and a lot of the games on tonight's card have a, uh, an under feel to them. You look at uh, the Canes 8-2 and two to the under, their last 10 at home. This is a team that's playing extremely well right now, still has eyes on the number one spot in the East. Uh, but at the very least, um, um, they're stringing wins together. It's going to come It's going to come right down to the wire because a lot of these teams have uh, some very competitive games coming up. And then the Bruins, you look at their last 10 away, 7-3 and three to the under. You get a couple of these teams together, and um, normally, uh, absent of power plays, absent of mistakes, if these teams are playing, and there's a lot at stake for these two teams tonight, um, you expect it to be a, a very tight one throughout uh, under five and a half. Uh, those five and a halves are tough but uh, in taking unders, but this one just has that two, one, three, two feel to it. Uh, so I'm going to ride with the under here and see what Brian has to say. I, uh, best bet on the show, so I'm going to come back to it a little bit later. But you had mentioned a little bit about um, – both these teams and the, the needs of uh, of each. The Bruins, 103 points, four points ahead of Florida. Carolina, 101 points, sit five points behind the Rangers with a game in hand. So this, as you mentioned, is going to be a highly sought-after win for both teams. Um, and I'm going to come back and I'm going to do something a little different with the total, but I'm in agreement. I think it'll be a low-scoring affair you would expect uh, this to be like a playoff preview. So I'll, I'll come back and I'll touch on this for our best bet. But as, as of this point, I think you're headed in the right direction here. Well, as I continue to notice, guys, with these matchups that are playoff bound teams versus non playoff bound games, you're just seeing that defensive intensity be there a, a lot more. You're seeing almost like a preview of what we're going to see in the first round. You know, the first 10 minutes of a game being the feel out process, you know, dumping the puck deep, go and chase it, make a few hits, you know, create a few plays, but it's almost like nobody wants to make a mistake. And, you know, I cashed the under in the last Bruins game here as a best bet on the show. They did have to kill four penalties. Uh, they were four for four on the PK, which is great for them. But in this particular matchup, I think both teams will have the exact same game plan. And, and you know, nobody likes to play against Carolina at home. They get the last change. They get all the matchups they want. 
They absolutely clog up the middle of the ice. Nobody likes it. And I'm sure the other coaches do not like how Rod Brendamore does his, what he does, you know, with the way he clogs things up, but it works for them. And to Carm's point, you know, we're all about transparency here. Under five and a half can be tough because I was on the phone with Carm uh, telling him that uh, my under with the Kraken and Kings was looking pretty good last night. And we had a four goal third period. You know, that doesn't really help you very much when you get a five and a half and you get four goals in one period. But with these two teams, I don't think that can happen. I don't think we'll see a four goal period here. Five and a halves can be tough, but I'm liking the way the depth is working right now for the Boston Bruins. All three centermen are back checking very well. Defense is looking good. And uh, both teams, I would argue, have good depth, that goaltender. Um, obviously kind of clear number ones at this point, but still, I believe as Car mentioned some games more than others, we probably care about depth or we care more so about starting goaltenders, but under five and a half is the play for me. These divisional matchups, uh, or excuse me, these playoff bound matchups here with teams trying to climb the ranks in their division, look for an under. And if people notice already, I've been betting a lot more overs with teams that are eliminated from the playoffs and teams that are playoff bound looking for some defensive games. So, uh, Carm, lots of totals for me lately, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, Andrew, uh, I hate playing totals. Um, and, uh, we have an Instagram question that we're going to get to in a little bit and, uh, stock tonk 93. Uh, I love your question. And, um, the answer to it is going to be my uh, show play at the end of the show, but we're still going to talk about it. But and Andrew, we, you and I were on the phone yesterday. The Edmonton Oilers just didn't show up last night in Dallas. Uh, the score was five nothing at the end of the second period, and you and I were discussing the live in game over. It's at six and a half. Uh, it seems so attractive because you're thinking six uh, six and a half. They need two goals in the third period. With a when you're looking at a number that sits at five at the end of the second period, uh, especially in-game betting, and Andrew, you and I do a lot of in-game betting, uh, it is one of the worst numbers to to, to want to bet the over at the end of the second period. Because number one, one team hasn't shown up for two periods. Uh, number two, the other team is playing lockdown. But of all the numbers that land on five, five nothing is one of the toughest to get there because your goals have to come five on five or four on five. Um, you're not going to see an, any empty net action in that uh uh, uh, to get you a goal, um, four one, you're going to need in order to get to have at least uh, two to three minutes of empty net time to get you maybe a, a goal. You're going to need the team that's down four one to make it four to two, or all your goals got to come four on five, or five on five. Three uh, three two final score or three two score at the end of the second period is probably the best one to to play. But a book is not going to give you six and a half minus one hundred five on the over like with. It was last night for this game at the end of the second period because 3-2 gets there so many ways. It wins, obviously, with a uh, a tying goal. The empty netter is in play. Uh, there's so much at play. Books are normally going to juice that to 160, 170, or they're going to make it 7.5. So those five uh, nothing ones, I'm almost, uh, I almost want to just take the under in it uh, and lay the little bit of uh, vig in that one. But with that said, here's my question for you, Andrew, real quick. We talk about this Boston team and we talk about Florida that we're going to talk about later as far as uh, answering that Instagram question. Here's this, who wins the division, Andrew? And uh, Brian, you can jump in on this one as well, too. The Florida Panthers, as bad as they've been playing of late, play Ottawa tonight and then they play the Bruins. They come home to play Ottawa. They come home to uh, then they're home to Columbus. They're home to Buffalo Sabres. And they're home to the Toronto Maple Leafs. So they're home for the last four games of the season. Um, four of these five games, four of their last six games are against non-playoff teams, with Ottawa being um, one of them twice. The Bruins, Carolina tonight in Carolina. Then they've got Florida. Then they've got Carolina again, this time in Boston. They've got the Pittsburgh Penguins, who are suddenly hot. The Washington Capitals, who are in a playoff spot right now and trying to win games. And then they end it with the Ottawa Senators. Boston has a four-point lead right now, Andrew. Do they hold on and win the division? That's a lot to throw at me, Carm, <laughs> but I do think they will. I, I think they will. Yeah. This Florida team, you know, you know you've know, you talked about it a lot, that uh, it's, it's about entering the playoffs, entering the postseason healthy. Obviously, you want to enter the postseason on a good note. We've seen teams limp into the postseason and not look the same, and the teams with momentum, they end up doing very well. But we've also seen the teams 
run out of gas. And I, I don't think the Panthers ran out of gas last year. They ran out of manpower. They ran out of healthy players at that point. So at this point, I think the Panthers goal is to go into the playoffs just just being healthy. What are your thoughts there, Brian? Yeah, I agree. I think it sounds like uh, we're in agreement on that one. Uh, you mentioned Ottawa a few times. These teams got to play Ottawa. Isn't Ottawa the team that at the end of the year, after they're out of the playoffs, they always seem to play pretty well down the stretch? Mm-hmm. So just because a team is out of the playoff hunt does not mean they're going to not come out and play good quality hockey. So, uh, yes, you know going in which games mean more to each team, but still, as we can see uh, many times, the underdog the is taken advantage of, at least in the minds of the players going into that game. And they come out and they score two goals right off the bat. No matter how good the other team is, you're playing catch up. And if you're not prepared ahead of time, we've seen this so much in football. If you don't prepare during the week, you're going to lose that game. So, um, yeah, just because the team's not in the playoff hunt doesn't mean they can't come out and sting you. Absolutely. Brian, and, uh, uh, <laughs> sorry, Carm. Brian, I'm telling you, uh, and Andrew, I, I, we talked about this. I'm the guy who, about a week and a half ago, declared uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins uh, dead on arrival. Um, I literally, they had no pulse. I said they were done. And uh, much like The Undertaker uh, in WWE, uh, they've risen from the dead like the Phoenix. Um, nine points in uh, out of ten their last five games. And they're smack dab right in it. If they beat Washington in regulation tonight, they are, what, a point out of a playoff spot for a team that was dead and buried. And that string of losing games started with a 6 nothing loss on the day in which they sat uh, Jake Gunsel because they were they planned on trading him um, uh, March the 7th. So um, sometimes you're right, sometimes you're wrong. We'll see how this one pans out. But uh, speaking of the aforementioned Pittsburgh Penguins, Andrew, let's talk about them now. Arm, uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins are a team that uh, I, I said nobody deserves to make the playoffs. If you remember a few days ago, I said none of these teams, the way they were all playing, it's almost like a battle of who can play uh, the worst. I mean, these teams were not playing great, but now Pittsburgh building some momentum here, Brian. They're playing the Washington Capitals, and you know this is a, 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 an old rivalry. You know, two teams that were always meeting in the first round of the playoffs, two teams that were always contenders with the superstars Ovechkin and Crosby. According to moneypuck.com, Pittsburgh Penguins, if they win this in regulation, they will get an increase of 8%, leading them to 23.2% chance of making the playoffs. To say this game means a lot uh, would be an understatement here, Brian, but we always know must win does not mean will win. What do you think? Yeah, this I've been watching line in this game all morning. And it seems to be two different syndicates going opposite directions because one minute Pittsburgh will be hit and the, and the line will move. Five minutes later, the other side are hit. So there's two team, two groups out there that like each side of this one. Uh, but we know we're going to get quality pre-playoff hockey here. Uh, the Penguins currently sit in fifth place in the wild card race, but uh, only three points behind second place Washington, as Carmine pointed out. Um, critical game for both teams. You know, if we take a look at the last 10 games, five on five play, the Penguins a 52.38 goal share, which is solid, 51.24% in expected goals. Washington, a little bit less here. Uh, Washington, 41.86 in goal share, 46.31 in expected goals. Washington's won last 10, excuse me, six of the last 10 meetings and four and five in this building. So they're going to come into this game uh, pretty confident against Pittsburgh, even though Pittsburgh has been playing, as Carmine pointed out, the better hockey right now. Pittsburgh fell apart at the trade deadline, uh, but they've rebounded as well uh, as of late, winning 4 of 5. And they've beaten Carolina, the Rangers, and the Devils, uh, three of the four teams that they'd beat. So they've been beating some quality teams. Capitals have dropped three straight and play tomorrow night in Carolina. So that's going to be a tough game for them. The spot here screams Washington. Pittsburgh's playing the tougher hockey. I kind of like Washington and what is I'm on it to basically a pick em situation here. Um, Washington has looked good at home against Pittsburgh. And this is really, even though they're the team ahead, this is a must-win game 
them as they go on the road and play Carolina in a game that they're going to be a pretty good size underdog in. Absolutely. And it's going to be a tough stretch. And, you know, the underdog factor or not the underdog factor, I guess, but the the team that nobody's talking about as much still, this Washington team has still been playing great hockey as well. I mean, we can't argue that they went on a huge run over the last two months. Carm, um, Pittsburgh Penguins, man, led by their top guys. Can they continue to push them uh, closer to a playoff spot? What do you think? I think they can. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm I'm likely looking at the total in this one, Andrew. But uh, I, I think I'm going to be on the opposite of Brian when we're talking about sides. Uh, I just think a, a team can get hot at the right time and, and make a run and get into the playoffs. Uh, watching uh, watching yesterday's game, the Rangers, uh, the Rangers Devils game, they talked about um, the Devils, uh, and I think it was back in '88 or something like that, where. Um, they looked dead and buried, and they went seven, uh, seven and seven zero oh and one, something like that. Um, they won seven of their last eight games to get uh, the final playoff spot and knocked out the Rangers. Um, as far as making it into the playoffs, they got hot at the right time. It just seems like Pittsburgh, after that, uh, after that run, where you, uh, again I declared them dead, man. They they've been winning games, and we talk about it. They went into New Jersey, dominated them. That was the second of a back to back after beating the Rangers uh, the night before. They lose that game in Columbus. They blew a late lead. Uh, that was a back-to-back -back with uh, with Columbus, but they still picked up three out of four points in those two games. And then, uh, obviously, beating the Canes. That was a good game against the Canes and Gunzel's return to Pittsburgh. So uh, it, it's not like they're, they're, they're not beating teams that, uh, uh, that have given up on the season. They're playing competitive hockey. Sid's carrying this team. Uh, you look at guys like Rust, Rust uh, playing uh, well. Malkin is getting in people's faces and irritating them as well, too, and scoring goals. It's one of those things where a team builds momentum sometimes, and uh, you just don't want to get it in, in the way of it. And now they got Washington. So it's a true four-point game between these two. And uh, the road teams won all three games in this series thus far. Uh, and, and I'm pretty sure it's not lost on the Pittsburgh Penguins that they – that um, Washington came came in and completely embarrassed them six nothing back on March the third, which is like just uh, just under a month ago. It's not lost on them. But trust me, I think Pittsburgh goes in there and wins. But I think Washington's way to get back uh, into this um, uh, final six or seven games of the of the season. Uh, back to winning games is going back to what they were doing before. They were playing great D. Uh, they were checking. They were swamping the uh, the neutral zone, not giving teams any room whatsoever. They were getting on them, and those games were going under. They were playing some great defense. They're going to have to do that to Pittsburgh. They're literally going to have to mirror those guys on the ice, play a defensive game. Uh, it's in their benefit if the game went to overtime. They pick up a point even if they lose the game. Uh, I like the under in this. It's sitting at six. I got to lay about 15 cents juice, but six is always another number. If you get six and a half, it'd be great, but you're never going to get six and a half with these two teams this late in the season. So uh, give me the under six uh, with a slight lean on Pittsburgh. All right, Carm, looking towards a defensive battle. And as I keep mentioning, these games that have so much meaning, a lot of times we are seeing defensive games and low scoring games, small lean to the Pittsburgh as well for Carm and Brian looking towards the home team, Washington Capitals. I'll give my take on the side in the best bet segment. But as for now, guys, two player props. I keep on mentioning how top heavy they are. So why don't I go ahead and say Dylan Strom to get a point. Eight of his last 10 games, this guy has a point. He's out there on the power play. He's playing big minutes. He's out there a lot with Alex Ovechkin. So whether he's scoring or Ovechkin scoring, usually he is a part of those plays. And then, of course, for the Pittsburgh Penguins, wash, rinse, repeat, Sidney Crosby to record an assist. Eight of his last 10 games, he has gotten an assist. It's, it's really out of this world to bet the point prop because if you have one or two bad days with it, you're going to lose quite a few units because it's like minus 230. You can get a really good price, minus 115, to just get a, an assist. And uh, he's obviously passing the puck around a lot. He's out there on the power play as well. And I think that as much as Sid has been scoring, the key for the Penguins is for him to be able to find his teammates when he draws attention to be able to find his teammates and create goals for them. 
So to get an assist, eight of his last 10 games, I'll ride that streak uh, with those two players. And even if it isn't a low scoring game, I think Strom and Crosby are two players that have a big factor in this Thursday night showdown, the Metropolitan Division between the Penguins and the Capitals. I believe we do have a Instagram live question here um, talking about from Matty Crenshaw asking if there's value on Pittsburgh for any futures. Well, uh, if the word value to you uh, means getting a really big plus price, then I would say yes. Uh, At this point in time, I, I would probably say that, you know, I would only go as far as maybe betting them to make the playoffs. I don't know if I'd go as far as to win the East or win, you know, win the cup or anything like that. If you, if you want to take them because, you know, it's actually a good point because in some of their games coming up, they're not really going to be massive underdogs. So the price you're getting for them to make the playoffs right now and just getting to make one bet versus betting them on their pick, you know, minus 110, 120, whatever it might be each day. I think actually could be a good idea. So uh, Maddie Crenshaw from Instagram live, I would say my two cents, the playoff future would be a decent idea, especially to limit your volume. Karim, what are your thoughts on that one? Yeah. The uh, current price on Pittsburgh to win the Stanley cup. So uh, I haven't seen any to make the playoff ones. I haven't seen any to win the conference prices, but to win the cup, they are 40 to one right now. Probably should be a little bit higher just because they're on the outside looking in and we got six games left. Uh, and if they lose tonight to Washington in regulation, that price is uh, probably a 50 or 60 to one. So uh, I don't think there's value there just because even if they squeak into the playoffs uh, somehow into that number eight seed, they're going to have to play the New York Rangers or the Boston Bruins or the Carolina Panthers in the uh, Carolina Panthers, Carolina uh, Hurricanes in the first round, thinking football after that Stefan Diggs bomb you dropped on me yesterday, Andrew. I don't think there's any value there. Uh, you would need for them to not only get into the playoffs, but win a series before you can start with that uh, little bit of hedging to to at least make your money back and, uh, uh, and, and lock up some future profit as well, too. So uh, it's a no for me. Yeah, for myself, it's uh, it, it's a situation that if you're going to do it, you do it in hockey, because we see this every year. A team just barely makes the playoffs and they go on a long run. Teams that win the Presidents Cup do not advance in the playoffs. So, hockey is the one sport. I guess baseball is a little bit like that also, because you you cut it down to only basically two starters that you need in the playoffs for the most part. But um, yeah, in the NBA, I would never play a big underdog like that. But in hockey. Since the games are so close and you're only scoring, you know, your winning team in a hockey game normally scores, you know, three, three goals, four goals at the most. Uh, you're right in there with an underdog. So uh, I'm not saying I would play Pittsburgh, but I would say that if you're looking to bet an underdog in the playoffs, this is the sport to do it in. You see it every year. You see it every year. A team just gets on a roll, gets going. And, and a big part of it, I believe, is, is what Brian just mentioned there. The games get lower scoring. They get more physical. They get more intense. And if they're lower scoring, that means the defensive ability can help you with, you know, only having to score one or two. And what happens is, Brian, is that those games are still entertaining. I can get behind a low scoring game. I know some hockey fans, the way they're trying to change baseball and hockey and basketball, you know, fans these days can't enjoy a low scoring game. But, uh, you know, we have seen some awesome 2-1 hockey games in playoffs. Really great games. Yeah, to me, to me, sometimes a 5-4 playoff game is like sloppy. It's not even like quality hockey versus you see a real low-scoring game. That's the best hockey, I think. Yeah, but Karma, I, I thought you were, uh, I thought you were jumping in again. Yes. <laughs> I, I am jumping in. I, I enjoy that. Uh, I enjoy the old-school hockey during the regular season. Uh, I know there's not much fun in watching a 2-1 game, uh, but it, I think it was that Florida game, the Florida um, Florida Carolina game, where Ajo scored with like 20 seconds left. It was the only game, goal of the game, one nothing. but it was pure hockey, back and forth. Um, it, it wasn't static hockey. Uh, there were plenty of chances. Goalies played extremely well. Um, 
those are the games I enjoy. We're going to see them in the playoffs. And and to Brian's point, the the playoffs are where you want to bet some dogs and you can make some money. If you look at last year's first round of the playoffs, game one of the last year's playoffs first round was won by the road team, the underdog last year. Six of eight games was won by um, um, the away team at plus odds. Great time to bet them. And if you take that one step further, and I know Brian does this, uh, if you like the team that lost, uh, number one, you're going to bet them in game two, but you're going to get a better series price because they're already down one nothing in the series. So you're going to get a better series price on them. A team that uh, was, let's say, 180 to win the series and then they lose the first game at home, that drops down to about 120. So you're almost better to uh, to wait on betting the series price on 18. If they win game one, you just pass on it completely because the price is through the roof. But you can get a much better price by sitting out game one, watching for the dog. And of those six teams that won game one, uh, six or eight teams, only one went on to win the series. So there's proof in the pudding there that you get a much better price on the home team after they lose game one. Uh, who was that home team, Andrew? None other than uh, Nathan McKinnon and the Colorado Avalanche. To Raven Ron's release, the Kraken. Yes, they did. And uh, the price adjustments between one game to the next in the NHL, it's the same thing as live betting, it seems like. There's just overreactions left and right. So if you want to make futures you know, of a round, you can definitely wait to do that after a game or two. But we've got games to talk about before the playoffs even get here, guys. Thank you all for being here with us, though. Uh, chat room is bumping on YouTube. We're on YouTube Shorts Live right now, Instagram Live, Facebook Live. We are all over the map on the Wager Talk TV network. We're also live on Twitter. So, guys, let us know where you're watching puck time from we appreciate all of you for being here with us hit the like button subscribe to our channels we really do appreciate it all right carm we've got the blues and the predators going head to head here and i might add two teams that get the least amount of credit aren't talked about enough you know I, i've talked about how nashville bridgestone arena is an arena i'd like to get to someday especially for a playoff game Seems like a great place to go for a game. But the, the run that Nashville was on for so long, could you only imagine if that was like the New York Rangers or the Toronto Maple Leafs? You know, I could only imagine that huge run, like the 8-0-2 or what is it, 10-1. and They are a team that's underappreciated. But this St. Louis Blues team, they won't go down without a fight either. You know, they are scrappy as well. Do you have a side that sticks out to you in this game? I'm going to go right back, Andrew. Uh, I'm going to go right back to the total in this one. And listen, um, you know, totals are tough. Uh, I gave out two totals, or actually three totals. One was a, a, a team total yesterday, the team total one. The other the other two um, obviously didn't because the Oilers didn't show up. But And the Leafs didn't show up. But you need both teams to, to obviously contribute theirs. But, you know, this total here is sitting at six under 15, and this is purely speculative for me, uh, and I'm, I'm going to explain why. The data on this game is pretty much split both ways. Um, you've, there, there's enough data to make you want to take the over. There's uh, just enough data to make you want to take the under. And the past results don't always uh, predict what the future outcomes are going to be. So you look at the two games between these two teams, and they were high scoring games a little earlier in the season that doesn't mean that just because those were high scoring we're going to see a high scoring game here tonight i think the fact that this game has importance to both teams right now nashville for positioning uh the blues to try and get closer to nashville it's a true four point game for st louis and probably one that if you look at the regulation wins for st louis they need to win this game in regulation time to uh, against nashville to get closer can you imagine if you have uh, this game uh, and St. Louis pulls their goalie in a tie game late in the game? I'm waiting to see that happen. It has yet to happen this season, but we're going to see it at some point in this, this last two weeks that teams take into consideration that they cannot give up a point to their opponent and are going to pull their goalie with a couple of minutes left in this game. I'm not going to say it's going to happen tonight, but I wouldn't be surprised in a tie game if it did. I'm leaning under here. Uh, I am going to go that this game is of importance. The Blues did a very good job of shutting down the Edmonton Oilers. 
the Dallas Stars did an even better job last night. Uh, they're going to have to shut down Nashville. They don't want to get into a high-scoring game because it didn't work out well for them in the first couple. Uh, under six for me in this one. Brian Leonard, are you with me or are you against me? Well, you mentioned pulling goalies. Minnesota's done it twice in overtime in the last couple of weeks and uh, split out on those. So, yeah, it's, it's an interesting uh, rule that they put in there, but we'll see what happens here. Uh, these clubs have split the last 10 meetings. Blues winning three of six in this building. Nashville currently sits at 90 points, which is good enough for the first wild card. Blues are third in that category with 84 points. Over the last 10 games, five on five play, the Blues 51.22 goal share, 49.5 expected goals, about league average or so. Nashville's played a lot better, 60.87 in the uh, goal share, 59.49 in those categories um, for the expected goals. Uh, so they've played a little bit better as of late, even though they have lost a few games as of late. But uh, St. Louis has won eight of 11 games. Uh, they're playing really well. They have two days rest coming into this one. Nashville's lost three in a row on the back of that excellent streak that you mentioned. Uh, well, the Predators heading out on the road after this one, you know they'll be want to secure that victory here. But I like them to do so, but I think the line's too high. Um, St. Louis, as I mentioned, has played pretty well in this building. Um, so I have a lean with St. Louis here, not enough to get there on either side. But uh, this is a game that uh, maybe live betting will give us a better line on what we're looking for. But right now, I think Nashville wins a game, but the line's too high, which means me leaning with St. Louis, but not enough to place a bet. I know what you mean about those, Brian. Like when you're looking at the line, you're like, ah, I kind of like this team, but don't like the number. It's been happening to me a lot lately. And, and you know, I've... You know, I've been staying away a lot more over the past few days. I think my NHL volume has been a lot lower. Maybe some of that has to do with uh, MLB being around. You know, I mean, there's more there's more to look at each day. And um, that way I can really just pick my spots throughout. But yeah, I mean, looking at this matchup here, when I go through some of the numbers that I had for this matchup, again, I talk about these teams being on two underappreciated teams. And the reason why I did that at the start you know, I've been betting a lot of totals, team totals and things, but take a look at Nashville here. They had a 7-4 and 8-4, 5-4 and 8-2. I mean, this is a team that was no stranger to high scoring affairs. And what's crazy to me is that they have been known for the last five years to number one, it seems to always have a great goaltender, you know. They relate, you know, like a Pecorine to UC Saros. Their backups are always great. So they were always that defensive team. But as of right now, I'm seeing them as a great team that knows how to bounce back, that knows how to get it going again. So I'm comfortable here with the money line for the Nashville Predators. If people do want to jump in and get a better price, the team total for them to get to four does make sense. Um, going through their last couple wins here, they have mostly gotten to four when they have been successful. But this St. Louis Blues team, to me, is still a little bit inconsistent. And I don't like that in hockey. You know, that's that's what people have to know about hockey. These teams, they work in mysterious ways. And if we want to know why, I mean, you don't understand it. But look at Pittsburgh, right? I mean, you you you, you drop a game, you know, with four minutes to go, you're up 3-1. You're up 4 nothing. they lose a game. And now all of a sudden, they're winning a few games in a row. I mean, momentum is huge in the NHL, huge in the game of hockey. Um, but I also just think that Nashville has the ability to bounce back after being blanked against the Boston Bruins. And I would also argue guys that, like I said earlier in the show, I mentioned Boston killed four penalties. Um, they look good on the penalty kill. Their defense was good, but Nashville still created a ton of chances in that game. So, uh, let's rock with the Nashville predators to get the job done here. Carm. Uh, I like that one, Andrew. Um, I want to mention, before we forget, because I'm always terrible at this. Andrew, you're so much better at this. You have a 5% play going in the NHL tonight, and I know you have a promo code for, I think it's either three or seven days. So, um, you know, head over to Wager Talk, um, pick up Andrew's 5% play uh, for tonight. I'm always bad with this promo stuff, man. But, uh, <laughs> but I wish you the best of luck on this one, man. Let's see if you can build off of uh, my Ranger win last night with uh, one of your own tonight. 
Andrew, uh, you, you talked about this one. Uh, I think Marco, uh, and maybe Brian knows this, Marco was in Nashville for like a week. Uh, he caught the Vegas Golden Knights game when they were there. I'm not sure if he went to watch the Boston Bruins game as well, too. But the Bruins can do that to a lot of teams. They can go in and just shut you right down. They play the same style of hockey on the road as they do at home. And they can just shut teams down. That's why they're they're such a, a, a dangerous team and are having another great year like they did last not as good as last year that was a record-breaking year but they're having a good year but um preds man um uh i won't say i've fallen in love with this preds team but i did say early in the season give the preds some time uh, under brunei they're going to learn the system uh they're going to score some goals and they're going to make the playoffs and i'm glad i'm one up on the prez on that one Prez is uh, somewhere with a box of Kleenex is looking at uh, uh, Yossi's girlfriend or something on the internet. So let's forget about <laughs> that. He's not even watching the show. But uh, go Preds. <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw yeah. that one in. <laughs> the one thing about those is that he definitely earns some engagement. When he mentions like a player's girlfriend yeah. or wife, it, it gets us lots of comments on the shows. I mean, I'm sure people aren't and, tuning in and, to find and, out and who's... Who, yeah, exactly. Exactly. But... Uh, I don't think people are tuning in to watch the three of us talk about people's wives. Uh, and if you are, <laughs> wrong show. Probably the wrong show. Uh, yeah, that uh, that promo you are mentioning there, Carm, AM69. Uh, AM69. It's a week of all of my plays, all sports, not just hockey, for $69. So uh, to me, that is a great, great idea. If you're interested in grabbing the 5% play, you know, ideally, when I check my report today to see how many people grab my 5% play, I'd rather it be like not that many people, but a lot of people joining me for the week because $35 for the 5%, $69 for all sports. You're going to get UFC. You're going to get uh, NBA. You're going to get MLB plays. You're going to get a lot of different stuff for $69 for one week. And with that being said, I'll lead things off with the best bet segment in the NHL tonight. And I am going to side with the Pittsburgh Penguins. And a lot of that due to the momentum that I spoke about just a few moments ago in the NHL. You can have a team that a month ago, they're blowing leads. They can't get any depth scoring. Their goaltending is letting them down. And then when you start to see the confidence and the hope slip into a team's mind, it can do great things. And they're playing the Capitals, a rival from a long time ago that's been many years with these two teams, Ovechkin versus Crosby. The Capitals got the best of them. Last month, I feel like that revenge factor is there. Not rapid revenge, but it's there. And although I keep on saying on shows that I'm on that Pittsburgh is very top-heavy, I would argue Washington is even more so top-heavy. If they don't have a few guys doing the bulk of their scoring, I believe they don't have anybody doing their scoring. And so to me, I think it's advantage for Pittsburgh. That's my free play of the day, guys. Join me on my 5% play. Nine games today in the NHL. One big bet. Uh, hoping for a ton of goals. And I got an over selected for my big 5% play. Back to you guys. Uh, Brian, let's go to you for your, your uh, best bet of the show. What you have going. You're, uh, you're crushing it with NCAA hoops. I know you're hot in multiple sports. But uh, we'll start with that, man. Do you have any plays for Final Four? Actually, as of right now, I've got nothing going for today. I'll probably have something up in the final four. Um, so don't buy anything for me today. I've got nothing to sell, which gives you more money to buy Andrews. Big 5% play today or Carmine's entire card. Uh, I'm going to go back for my best bet, and I'm going to hit on this Boston-Carolina game that we talked about earlier. These two have split the last 10 games. Neither club ever winning more than two straight. Uh, very evenly matched series. Four of the last five games have been one goal affairs. Uh, the road club has won eight straight times before the host has captured the last two. So you've, your underdogs and your road teams have been very live in this series. Um, when looking at uh, recent five on five action in the last 10 games, Boston 51.22 goal share, 52.49 expected goals. Carolina slightly better, 59.46 goal share, 55. 0.07 for the expected goals. During that time, the Bruins scored a 6-4-0 record. Hurricanes 8-1-1. And as Carmine mentioned way back when we started the show, that these two meet again on Tuesday. Uh, we talked about this. We all like the under, but I don't like to play under fives and a halves. 
So the way I'm looking at this one is I'm going to take the Carolina team total under three and a half. It's going at about 165 right now. Carolina team total under three and a half. Seven of the last nine games between these two, Carolina failed to reach four goals. So we've got some recent history. We've got the importance of the game. And we've got an underdog series that's done very well. So let me take a look at Carolina under three and a half minus 165 is my best bet. Carm. What are you thinking for tonight, man? No, uh, okay. I like that idea. I like that idea. The one time you don't jump I, in, man, the crickets, the crickets were being heard uh, on the show here. <laughs> the crickets were being heard. Um, I'm going to get to my best bets uh, in our show, uh, show play in a second and answer, uh, which will answer uh, the Instagram uh, question from stock tonk 93 about the Panthers game tonight, but I would be remiss if I didn't mention over at Sports Memo, uh, Thursday's two dollar day. Uh, today is Jesse Shule. He has a two per, he has a, a two dollar NHL uh, play up, um, uh, two bucks. Some great promos in it. The guy is number one overall the last three hundred sixty five days across all sports at Sports Memo. Uh, the last three hundred sixty five days in NHL, number one, and in NBA also number one. The last three hundred sixty five days. Guy puts in a ton of work, um, is doing fantastic over at Sports Memo. You can get his um, NHL play for tonight for only two bucks. So head over to Sports Memo and take advantage of that. Um, so the Instagram question was, what do we think about the game tonight? You know, I've talked about when a team's uh, win streak comes to an end uh, and it's a, a longer win streak, I like to play against them in the next game or even two. I did it with Nashville. Uh, eight, I think it was 18 games in a row, 16 0 and 2. They lose to Arizona, uh, then they lose to Colorado, and then they come home and lose uh, in their first to the Boston Bruins. The Ottawa Senators have been playing uh, spo the spoiler role. They won six games in a row, three of them against some teams that were vying for playoff spots. But they go into Minnesota and they looked flat in that game. It was a game that was winnable and they didn't win it. Minnesota wins that game 3 2. Now they return home and they've they're playing a Florida team that are looking to bounce back uh, off some bad results. And especially for Bobrovsky, if he goes tonight, he's listed as the expected starter. He allowed five on like 17 shots uh, in that start against the Leafs. I think there's only 16 or 17 shots on that. His save percentage was under seven, 683, I believe. I'm going to look for them to bounce back before they play the Bruins next. Uh, I'm going to look for them to get the win tonight, minus 150. Florida Panthers as your show play. A couple plays up in the NHL. You can get them over at Wager Talk on my page. Hit the like button, guys. We appreciate all your comments. I'm going to send it back to Andrew. Uh, wish him best of luck with his 5% play tonight, and he'll take us home. I appreciate it, guys. I uh, really do. Hoping for a big night. Hoping for a big night for the three of us. And, uh, guys, uh, all sports, uh, check us out, all three of us, wagertalk.com and Carm. Well, my Canadians could beat the Panthers. Uh, we'll find out if the Senators can, but I'm rooting for you uh, with the Florida Panthers in bounce back mode after the Habs played underdog. Guys, a great, great slate in the NHL. Thanks so much for being here with us. If you enjoyed the show, uh, please hit the like button, show some love, subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time right here on Puck Time.